Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In War of the Visions, let's pull for Setia, and then let's look at the producer's letter. Uh, this is a pre-recorded pull, and then also the producer's letter came out a couple days ago. So this video is a little late, but we'll put it up anyway. Uh, but this will guarantee you a number of uh, UR stuff. Uh, so I was going to pull this anyway, because I want the Mog Medals, I want to take advantage of the Star Exchange. Uh, but there's also a small chance I will pull Setia. Uh, she has the no pickup uh, rate. And uh, I did say that I would never... Ooh, new card! <laughs> uh, that will buff uh, water characters, that's nice. Oh, and Dwayne. Uh, pulling this, I wanted either Gilgamesh, Dwayne, or Setia. Uh, so yeah, this is already a win here. Uh, but Gilgamesh, he is in the middle of EX jobs, and then Dwayne, with this pull, I got him to uh, limit break 5, so... I'm looking pretty good on cost 100 units. And so, I'll have them all at EX jobs, except for Jaden and uh, Setia. And then the other day, I asked uh, folks about how their cost 100 units uh, progression was going, and then people were like, I have 1 or 0, and I felt like a jerk for having all of them. <laughs> But yeah, um, I said before that uh, for cost 100 units with a lower than average pull rate, I will not pull for them, uh, because I've seen many people get broken by the, uh, the lower pull rates. Uh, they always go to the ceiling or they quit the game or something. I don't want that to happen to me, so I did this pull here. And then I also did the, uh, the 300 paid vision or 10 shot ticket uh, that they did also for last year, where I miraculously pulled June. I also pulled that for Setia, did not get her. But I'm not too broken up about getting uh, Setia now. To be honest, I'd rather have June because she is the, uh, the tank. Okay, next, let's move over to the producer's letter. Uh, from Mr. Hirono. Uh, Mr. Hirono, he will step down as a producer of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. He's done that since launch. Uh, he actually came up the, with the idea of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius and War of the Vision, so... He's kind of achieving legend status. But yeah, he's been appearing less in uh, recent live streams, and I guess he'll be taking more kind of a uh, behind the scenes role. Alrighty, he's talking about the online meeting for the, uh, the JP version. I think this is the first time that they're doing this for JP, but they've done it a couple times for Global. So that's kind of cool. And then uh, he says that uh, the Another Story uh, is popular, so that's cool. I enjoyed it too. Uh, the way that I think they are doing it, the way that they are presenting it, it reminds me more of like classic uh, Final Fantasies from like the Famicom, you know, super old school. You have like uh, younger kind of main characters, like maybe they're just teenagers, and then they're doing like classic Final Fantasy stuff, like going on adventures or saving the crystals or like helping townspeople. It's very different from the, uh, the tone and the mood of the, uh, the War of the Visions. Uh, which is more adult, more kind of a tactics feeling. Alrighty, then we got uh, some announcements here. New unit, Setia. Uh, fire, cost 100. Main job is the Crystal Knight. Uh, fire version, so she'll be an, an archer. Sub jobs, Viking and Sniper. I should like and want this character, because I want, you know, to get cost 100 units, because I feel like they're the best investments. And then also fire. Uh, my account has a strong uh, fire emphasis, but I don't know. Just somehow I don't feel super motivated to get her. In old tactics games, like uh, Tactics Ogre, archers were super overpowered. It's like uh, having Orlando or not in your team in Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, but in War of the Visions here, the uh, archers are definitely scaled down, so they're not super powerful. Uh, but let me break. This will uh, imperil fire resistance and then do big damage. Uh, this is cool, and I wanted it initially to set up my other fire units, but uh, I remember that I have Rain, who also has a fire imperil, so uh, we can skip that, I think. Uh, Delita, he has a uh, fire imperil as well. Uh, but the uh, Final Fantasy Tactics uh, rerun, the uh, collaboration there, probably not going to happen until next year sometime. They're probably going to be the last units to get EX jobs in War of the Visions. <laughs> and let's see what else we got here. Let's see, lower reaction ability. And then also lower healing efficacy. That's cool. Big uh, AoE as well. And then last skill here will get rid of uh, re-raise. And then has a chance of stun. 
So she looks good, but I don't think I need her right away. My, uh, my mono fire party is pretty strong at the moment. Okay, some more details about her there, no big deal. Uh, there's a farmable bow. Uh, one nice thing about these uh, Warrior of the Crystals EX quests, uh, where you farm for their uh, weapons, they're always up. There's no time limit, so you can do it whenever you like. I still have to work on uh, June's sword, but I can do that later. And then if you get the uh, plus 5 of this uh, bow, uh, we'll give you 15% up HP for the first three turns of battle. I don't know how often archers are going to get hit within the first three turns. If you're playing right, they shouldn't be. <laughs> don't know how much I need that. Alright, login bonuses. Uh, they've been handing out more of these uh, five shard uh, unit tickets. I guess maybe instead of uh, Vision Ore, which I'm fine with. I like the tickets a lot. They really helped me with uh, Oberon in particular lately. Okay, more login bonus. Here's more uh, Vision Ore. And then a pickup tickets for Setia. I'll pull these every day, of course. Hopefully get her. And then here is an event to raise the, um, the bonuses for crafting. So like really hard stuff, like uh, Platinum Mace or like... Uh, what was it? Thancred Sword? <laughs> if you wanted to max those, this would be a good time to do that. Okay, new guild battle map. Fire attack up. Too bad I don't play guild battles. All right, and then here is the EX uh, Awakening schedule for October. First week, nothing. Second week, uh, Skull, Mariaru, and Oreira. Uh, Mariaru is a guarantee for me. She was already super powerful at 99. I really used her successfully to tank uh, Yuna when Yuna first came out. And then third week, it'll be Halloween, uh, Leela, and Aidu. That's interesting. I expect more Halloween units to be released, why not? And then fourth week, uh, Luasa, Revile, and Kadia. Luasa, I am very interested in taking to EX jobs. I like her look. I love a, a good exhibitionist. And then fire, of course, that would work for my account. So yeah, maybe Mariado week two, Luasa week four. And then we're getting very close to the end of all of the legacy units getting EX jobs. It's like Sakura, and Garble, and El Shirel, and Raldor and stuff, so... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what is going to happen after all those units get the EX jobs. And then soon I want to make a video where I make predictions for like second anniversary and beyond, so... Keep an eye out for that. I'm gonna skip all the Halloween stuff, I think. <laughs> okay, and I was shocked to see this. Uh, more Selection Quest stuff. I saw this and I was like, oh, are they going to do the uh, second wave? Because we're done with the first wave in JP. Uh, but what they're going to do is add an EX stage to the light quest, which I love as an idea. And then if you beat it, you can get a, a special piece of equipment. The reason why I love this is because, one, it uh, pushes back the, uh, the second wave of selection quests, which I don't think we need right away. Uh, very few people have beaten them all as they are. Uh, but two, I also like it because it gives uh, people, like, another chance uh, to use their, uh, you know, MR and lower rarity characters that they use a lot of materials on to get up. It makes that investment more worth it. And it actually might get people to play the quests uh, that didn't play them before. Like, for me, I was looking at the, uh, the units that were available at the end, and then if they didn't interest me very much, I would just skip the quests. But with the equipment, if it's interesting enough or good enough, I might go through. Not worry about the missions, don't worry about the, uh, the mind spheres of the units, uh, but just try to get the clears and then get access to the EX stage so I could get the, uh, the weapon or the equipment. That is a great idea from the developer's part. Good job. <laughs> and then if it's once a month, like the original schedule, then it'll be, uh, what, another eight months until uh, they're all done with the weapons? So maybe they would release the uh, second wave of selection quests after that. Alright, and then other random uh, updates. Uh, event Archive. Uh, once per day, you can uh, kind of select an event, and then for a limited time, you can play that event. I don't know if this is going to be like story events, or like, you know, like recipes, maybe even collaboration. Probably not collaboration, but... Yeah, this will be interesting. There's a lot of like equipment and stuff that I just like don't feel like doing in the moment, and then it 
passes me by, and then I have to wait for the next time it comes around. So this could be good to have. Uh, it doesn't look like any of this stuff is coming very soon, though. All right, next. More scoring stuff for event quests or multi-quests. Don't care about that. This will save more parties for you. This is good. <laughs> uh, let's see, pickup match. Uh, they tried to do this before. Uh, you go into like, uh, it's kind of like a friend match. And then you each have like six units that you get ready. And then you go to the matching screen and then you see the other six units that the other guy has. And then you choose three. It's like Pokemon and then they fight. Cool idea, but they weren't able to make it work last time, so they'll try to add it later. Uh, let's see... Raids... If it's a password room, they'll make it easier to continue. Joining that room, I guess. Guild raids... Yeah, some stuff there. Let's see... For the auto party, it will include espers that you have high resonance with. Aha, good. They will add items where you can reset an Esper's board. <laughs> I don't mind paying the 50 Vision Ore. Uh, Vision Ore is not as precious in here as it is in uh, Brave Exvius. But yeah, even to save that 50 would be nice. And then, let's see, Vision Abilities will be easier to see on Vision Cards. It's really interesting that they haven't added uh, Vision Abilities to Vision Cards in a very long time. I'm wondering if they're too powerful. That might be the thing. I love them because they are so powerful, but maybe they customize characters too much. Uh, let's see. AI. Uh, let's see. HP healing and then status recovery. AI will be improved. And then here, this is always interesting when it comes up, but leftover JP, job points, uh, you'll be able to change for other stuff. This makes me wonder that if they do sub-EX jobs, if they will do something else instead of job points. Like if they introduce this uh, thing where you can exchange job points, and then you exchange it for some stuff, and then later they release sub-EX jobs where you need job points, people are going to be upset about that. Not too upset. It's not so hard to get JP these days, but yeah, it's kind of suspicious. Alright, and then let's see, parting words... Yeah, pretty much just repeating what's said at the beginning. Okay, so that was a uh, 10 shot for Setia, and then a look at the producer's letter for JP. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.